Yeah, Les Knox from um, Narrabri, New South Wales. I was actually born in Moree and spent my early years on Tumala uh, before moving to Narrabri at the age of seven when my dad got a job on the railways. Uh, it was the New South Wales government railways at that stage. And he spent 33 years there doing that. And uh, that's how come I got to be in Narrabri. Well, my mum and dad, and, and I had uh, two sisters and a brother. And, uh, you yeah, know, growing up in Narrabri was really good. We all sort of got on with each other. Uh, and uh, my, my brother and my sisters are all doing well uh, in the various fields that they're working in. Uh, you know, we all keep in touch with each other. I know there are a lot of families around. Sometimes they never hear from family members when they go away for a while, but yeah, we keep in touch. Yeah, I'm living in Narrabri now, back in Narrabri. I actually left there when I was 20, went to Sydney, and uh, ended up getting a good job there, uh, which I like so much. I stayed there for 23 years. So I, I ended up buying a house here, got involved in all sorts of things down there, uh, particularly in the sports areas, because I played cricket. Had a couple of years playing cricket with North Sydney in grade cricket. Um, I had an opportunity to play first grade, but I knocked it back, because I just wasn't there to be really too competitive, just played for the fun of it. I was um, uh, you know, one of four in my, uh, my family and then after I moved to Sydney, you ended up uh, meeting, you know, as you do, you get to meet a lot of people there. And I met a young lady from up the north coast and, and we had a son and uh, he's now 37 and he's got eight kids. <laughs> And he's uh, doing all right for himself. Well, Narrabri's um, got a town population of around about 7,000 people. Growing up there, you treat it as an equal. There's none of this black and white stuff, and uh, it was a good way to live. Um, although I find now that I'm a councillor there to try and convince other councillors why these special programs are around to help Aboriginal people. Um, and because you know, I'm where I am and there are other Aboriginal people around that are in good jobs. They wonder why there are special needs out there for people. Well, actually I had my first paid job when I was 11 years old. I went out on a wheat farm during the school holidays and uh, for three days work I got six pound. Now, considering that I bought myself a pair of jeans, a pair of shoes, a shirt and uh, a number of other things and still had change, I give some money to my mum. Uh, that was a lot of money for an 11 year old. Actually when I left school I um, started working on the railways in the, the refreshment room. So I got to learn to serve customers and do all that sort of customer service type stuff and interact with people and, and it was good, I, I enjoyed that. When the train used to come in uh, packed 6 o'clock in the morning they used to put, me, put a white coat on me I walk up the platform, ringing the bell, and yelling out, Narrabri, Narrabri, being <laughs> Narrabri. <laughs> Worked in everything from a shearing shed to um, uh, working on the cotton fields. I used to go out and chip them during the school holidays and earn some pocket money. Uh, when I went to Sydney, knocked on a few doors and finally got a job uh, working in a, in a mill. So um, I enjoyed that. Um, and in those days, the guys that I worked with, we, we had to work back over the night and we'd take turns, there was five of us. But when the other guys found out that I didn't drink and, and they used to like to go for a drink after work, they'd ask if I'd do their shift. And I said, yeah, no worries. And at the end of the week, in the old days when they give you the pay in the pay packet, theirs was that thick and mine was that thick. And I used to say, hey boys, look at this. So I didn't mind working back over, over the night. I spent two years there, then I went and worked in a timber yard where I worked for uh, just on 12 years. And while I was doing that, I was also uh, working overnight in a, in a pub, uh, working behind the bar, and then I, one night the owner threw the keys to me and said, you're the boss. So I was the manager for two years. Um, I used to place Aboriginal people in jobs all around the place. I was actually the first one to place an Aboriginal with Qantas. And two of those young guys, they're, they're still there 20 odd years later. I uh, 
became involved in some of the community organisations there, but I also worked with the Rural Fire Service. They rang me up and wanted me to do work, do some work for a month, they had some money, to try and alleviate some of the problem fires in Moree and Bogabilla and Mungandai. But I was able to identify straight away why those fires had been lit. Because people knew me, I'd get requests to go on this committee and that committee and help out here and help out there, including the Mile Creek Massacre Committee and setting up a cultural centre. Yeah. Because there were a lot of unemployed people there that didn't have a licence, I then done a train the trainer course with um, Ministry of Transport and started running uh, licence courses for unemployed people to get their L's. And I set that up as a business and that was really good because people still say today that they see all the people driving around with pea plates on that went through my course. Well, I always uh, tell them how I knocked on doors. I said, you know, you get knockbacks, but you just keep going and uh, opportunities come. Never take no for an answer. Um, just believe in yourself that you can do it. That's the main thing. And nothing's uh, impossible.